Hey, what's up guys? My name is Moda and welcome back to the Mining Stacker YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be an ASIC miners buying guide. We're going to go through the ins and outs if you are new to the game and you are considering buying an ASIC. We're going to go from pretty much A to Z. We're going to talk about different stores, who I personally purchased from, why I purchased through them, why those aren't the only ones, why different stores have different price levels, who I recommend buying through. We're going to do price comparisons of different stores. We're going to talk about risks here. We're going to talk about scams here. Going to just cover the whole thing. So if any guys are new to the game, you're considering buying ASIC, you're unsure who to go through, you're going to want to watch. Okay. So if that sounds good, guys, stay tuned. Let's get to this thing. So this video, just a heads up, probably gonna be a pretty long one. We're gonna cover a lot of topics. We're gonna cover a lot of questions and we're gonna cover pretty much A to Z. So just the FYI, for any guys who already have your vendor, you already have your connect, you already have your dude on Telegram that you've been purchasing from years for, this video is not really for you, okay? This is more for people who are kind of iffy on the space and why we purchase the way we do sometimes different trusted stores why we purchase through stores why people would wouldn't and just kind of my viewpoint from it as a consumer because again i am a consumer of these things i don't get these things as review units or anything of that sort so again this is a big part of why i do what i do okay and as a heads up yes i do have referral links for some of the stores i will talk about in the description I could care less if you use them. As a matter of fact, I am probably the worst person in that sense because I forget to mention them half the time. Because in reality, I could care less who you purchase from. It's just I'll talk about why I have those in there and why my criteria for having them there is. Okay. So let's talk about number one, cheapest prices. Right off the rip, it's going to always be those Telegram Discord resellers, right? They have no overhead. They are usually very direct sales. They're usually focused on volume and they have select clientele, okay? So that's right off the rip, right? So a lot more risk there, different variables as to why you would and you wouldn't. If you were going to, if I were to think about it, the only person I would ever consider is going through T-Swift, okay? I've been talking to him for quite a while not just recently, since he started his selling A6, he's been in the game. He knows the ins and outs. He would be the only one I would be comfortable doing that with. So I will have a description to his Telegram group, group in the description for any guys who are interested. But me personally, I actually have not ordered through him, right? Reason being is my specific situation is a little unique, right? My personal criteria is it needs to be from an official store, I need an official receipt. Reason being is if you're in a position where your financials are going to get scrutinized more so than the typical person, right? So my situation is a little bit unique because I kind of want that, right? It also does benefit you for like auditing purposes and such as well. But for example, if you're in a position where your financials do get extremely scrutinized through frequent background checks, it is a lot easier to explain to a background investigator the situation as to why you sent, you know, $11,000 to a random address over in China. Okay, so that's kind of the easiest way to describe it. Because <laughs> again, to us who are in the space, sounds completely normal. But when you're trying to explain it to a normie, it sounds batshit crazy that you are sending $11,000, $15,000, $30,000, in some cases for some of you ballers, hundreds of thousands of dollars, to a random entity in China with no guarantee of anything at all whatsoever and that he may ghost you or not. Okay, so there is extreme risk in that sense. So you have to have extreme trust if that's the route you're going to go. And in reality, it's actuality, any of the stores also, right? Typically, especially the ones that deal in crypto only, right? You do have more protections if you are purchased through a credit card. We'll talk about that here in a moment. But for me specifically, it's just a must to have a website, a receipt, a picture of everything going on because it's just so much easier to explain for those situations. Okay, it's a lot easier to explain than a snapshot of a chat in WhatsApp 
and a transaction hash. Again, I'm trying to explain that to a normie, it's a little more difficult versus having a website. Here's the receipt. Here's the picture of the thing. This is the date ordered. Here's my account on this website. You can see it all here. And in that case, it makes a little bit more sense. It's just easier to explain. Okay, so like for me, that is a criteria to buy through a store of that capacity. So the stores that I have affiliate links with are all stores that I have personally vetted, that I have personally purchased through anonymously, right? Not under the guise of, oh, I'm a content creator. I'm going to do a review on your thing because then what's going to happen? It's going to be biased, right? So all of those that I purchased from, I initially purchased from anonymous accounts, just like Joe Blow. And based off the experience there is whether or not I decided to actually do an affiliate thing with them, okay? So I'm not partnered with any of them. I just have affiliate links. If I do eventually when they do a partnership with a store, it'll be a little bit more different. I'll probably talk about them even more because the benefit there is I'll have a closer relationship with that individual store, right? So we'll talk about the ins and outs. We'll talk about that more when we do the price comparisons because there are benefits to buying from those types of stores, okay? And that's a big reason why. So... So again, for me, the stores that I have chosen all have a specific use case, right? So best bang for the buck for me and hash and hash is one I have used. They typically are quick to update their prices. They typically have some of the better prices. Okay. So that's one I have there. I have used them successfully. No issues. If you have any questions, if you guys do use them, they are awesome on telegram. It's near instant communication there. Another one I have listed is BT Miners. BT Miners is higher on the price point for sure. The benefit and the reason I have used them is for the credit card aspect. They are one of the few stores who actually take credit cards. So like for me, there is a benefit there depending on the use case, right? So like for example, with pre-orders, things of that sort, you do have some recourse because you're paying through a credit card form of payment. Also, typically, the reason I've used them also are for like reward points, incentives, if you have some kind of offer, a credit card offer, things of that sort, sometimes that'll offset the difference of price. But understand that typically, number one, the price is higher. Number two, there's usually a credit card processing fee. Number three, because they're based in the US, usually sales tax on top of everything. So it is usually a quite heftier difference. So I'll have to account for all of those things and that's typically now i've purchased more recently more from nhash than bt miners but for those reasons i would use them right another one who does use them another reason i do have another one is with coastal coastal crypto they don't update their website too often so if you are interested in any of them hit them up and they'll give you updated prices right sometimes they go <laughs> Last time without updating them, but just hit them up, right? The store isn't really a priority for them, their farm is, right? So, and you'll see that typically with a lot of the other people who are hosting, who are do hosting services, their priority is always going to be their hosting services, right? But they are, again, one of the other few who do do that. Another big thing with Coastal or buying through, through them specifically is the customer service aspect, right? I do have full trace, full trust in Mark and John, and they proved that back when I bought my little Radiant ASIC, or at the time it was a, not Radiant ASIC, Radiant FPGA, which at the time was a Casper FPGA, that little molt miner, right? A lot of us got kind of screwed over with a crappy initial batch, right? So they were the only vendor I heard of that was able to do any kind of RMA, right? Unfortunately, it was pretty much only that first batch of RMA because we essentially got ghosted by the manufacturer but they went out of their way to kind of facilitate that, right? So huge props to them. And then for that reason, it's definitely one I would purchase again through, right? Again, it's sometimes price isn't everything, right? And we'll, we'll talk about that here towards the end as well. The last, who else did I have in there? I think that's it. <laughs> so those are the main stores. So the reason I use those stores, right? Number one, and hash was a recommendation from a lot of you guys out there, right? So they were recommended from a lot of you guys, and that's why I decided to try them out. They've been around for a while. The communication was good, and their prices were good, and they update their prices pretty frequently, right? So I do also want to make a quick comment for any of you guys who have purchased from any store, 
regardless whether your experience is positive or negative, please post it in the comments, right? Let's kind of have a good little comment section with a bunch of reviews from many places, right? Let's do that here as well. But um, another big criteria, like for example, with BT Miners, they were the first store I purchased from, and a big attraction for me was the fact that they were at a lot of the conferences, right? So they were at like Mining Disrupt, the year prior when I had first purchased, because that's who I purchased my KA3 and the K7 from and the HS3. They were a lot of those places. They were active in the community. They were a sponsor for SOAT. So those kinds of things are things I tend to look for, right? You want to look for trustworthiness, and that was what initially caught me onto them. And then my experience with them was overall positive. Okay, so those are the kinds of things I kind of try to look for in those stores, right? So you want to look for trustworthiness and that was a big reason why i wanted to go to these conferences this year went to wdms as well as mining disrupt to kind of get a gauge for what vendors were there see their presence because again if they're willing to spend in that advertising money it's they're gonna be here especially the ones that have been here for quite a while right and that's another reason i went with those stores also okay so those are just things to consider there so as far as like best practices the biggest thing i would recommend is buying with stables only okay us usdt whether it's tether tron whatever i would highly recommend using only stables just because of those price fluctuations okay so it can happen where you purchase that asic and then at the time you send let's say caspa for example it's worth x amount you send that amount it's there but they're unable to cash it into USDT until the following day, and it went down 15%. Then guess what? It's possible that they are going to expect you to add on that additional 15%. Okay, so it's kind of to avoid that whole situation, just use stables, right? That way you can kind of avoid the whole thing. And if something were to happen, let's say that batch gets canceled, anything happens, you want to just have stables just because there's going to be no fluctuation in the price, right? You're, if you sent 5,000 USDT, you're going to get 5,000 USDT back, right? There's no fluctuation there, okay? So that is a big thing. Another big factor is whether or not you are going to pay those customs duties or tariffs, okay? So if you are in the U.S., for example, that's a big reason a lot of us do not order directly from the manufacturers, right? from Bitmain, from Ice River, because we know 100% we are going to get hit with those fees, which are very hefty, okay? It's somewhere between 25, 28%, okay? So that's why, like, for me, for example, I definitely do not order from the manufacturer. I order through a lot of the other stores because a lot of the times you get to avoid those fees and it ends up being cheaper even though the price appears to be higher your end price which is what you want to worry about right so price after shipping your like final total price typically ends up still being cheaper from those stores versus the actual website unless it's an asic that is under that threshold like for example with the ks zeros on ice river if you order not 100 percent on the threshold i want to say it's under 800 it is cheaper to buy the KS zeros from Ice River directly in this case if you're under that threshold. So if you're ordering two or less, potentially three, definitely two, you're safe. Two or less, it's going to be cheaper through them because their shipping charges are less than the competition, right? Almost all the stores, including InHash, are like 100 plus for shipping versus Ice River Direct is 239 and it's like 55, 60 bucks for shipping. So your total cost, as long as you're only buying a handful, is cheaper now if you're buying 10 of these things and you get hit with those tariffs then it's a whole different story okay so different situations but though those duties fees are definitely something to take into account so whether or not whoever you're ordering from just verify whether or not you're going to have to pay those fees okay they'll be able to tell you so that's why a lot of people like for example crypto miner bros cmc because the price that's listed there is the price including shipping and all of that so just factor that in. Like, for example, I do use NHash, but the price that's listed, uh, you're not going to have to pay those duty fees because they value it at a certain point, but you do have to add on the shipping, which is like two, two fifty, somewhere in that range. Okay, so just always look at that total price. Okay, so make sure you fully understand who you're ordering from and whether or not you're going to be expected to pay those fees depending on your location and depending actually also where that ASIC is shipping from. 
okay? Because one thing we did learn at Disrupt, talking to the Ice River guys, is that there are times where they do ship from a different warehouse. They do have a warehouse in Malaysia. So, for example, if it gets shipped from Malaysia and you do buy it from Ice River Direct, those customs fees are drastically different. I think you wanted to say it was like 2.5% or something, which is basically, which is not a whole lot, right? So, something to consider there. We did mention it to them. It would be nice if they were to list that on there. Maybe when they do have models that are available to ship from there, that would be nice because, of course... The benefit from ordering from the manufacturer is the confidence level is extremely high, right? You're ordering direct from the manufacturer, okay? So maybe it'll be something to implement in the future, but for now, I would consider if you order from the manufacturer, you're mostly going to get hit with those fees. And also to clear up some confusion with those custom duties fees, like why certain stores, like how does it make sense? Like how are they paying those 25, but they're typically not paying those fees, Okay, so that's something that get cleared up also. What they're doing is they're valuing it under that threshold so you don't get hit with those fees. Okay, so it's not that these stores are, they're eating that 25% price and they're losing profit. That's not the case either. Okay, so understand that there is also risk there that if for whatever reason your thing is to randomly get pulled and they're actually to investigate, to, you may have to do some explaining there. Okay, so just understand that that is a possibility there it hasn't happened yet i have seen a few cases actually i got scared for a little bit when i got my ks3m because there were reports in discord of a few people who did order around the same time and that it did go through the miami port which is where mine came from whose theirs did get pulled aside <laughs> and it looked like they were gonna have to pay but they got in touch with the seller and the seller cleared it up for them and they got it taken care of okay but understand that there is a possibility, and I have a feeling eventually, one day, that it's going to get to the point where they're going to start flagging these things. But, as of now, so far we've been good. Okay. Um, so, just make sure you understand that. So, like we mentioned, some of them do do the credit card thing. There are pros and cons. The biggest pro here is you do have a form of consumer protection. Okay. So, by having that credit card, obviously... You have a chargeback options. You have different things just in case the store does try to screw you over. Okay. So that's a big reason why, like, yes, it is significantly more. You are going to pay quite a bit more for it. But the peace of mind sometimes, depending on your situation, can be worth it. Okay. Because at least at this point, you do have some form of recourse. You can do a chargeback. You can do different things. You do have some form of customer service which is also a reason a lot of these stores do not offer that, okay? Unfortunately, some there are bad actors who do take advantage of that also, okay? So there's pros and cons, and again, this is the primary reason that the majority of them do not offer this, okay? So just kind of keep that in mind, so just something to consider there. Another option as far as like consumer protection is on eBay, eBay is also a resource. Again, you are going to pay for it because on top of all the fees, there's eBay listing fees that are another 10%, so you're going to eat all that. So I wouldn't necessarily purchase new items because they are drastically higher typically. But if I were to buy a used ASIC from somebody who I don't personally know, this would probably be the only capacity because same thing for the consumer protection aspect. If you were to purchase one used, and you get it, and the thing is a dud, you are able to return that thing. You do have buyer protection there. If you were to do a deal on Discord or through some unknown means, you don't know what the hell you're going to get. You can get a box full of bricks, or you can get a unit that's a dud, or it can be an honest thing where freaking UPS wrecked that thing. Okay, You're not going to have any recourse there, though. You will through eBay, though. Okay, So like for used ones, especially during like panic times, like right now, for example, good time to throw out those low balls, right? See if people will accept, see if people take it. Just understand the risks here, though. Make sure if you are to purchase it, purchase it legitimately through eBay, okay? Meaning use PayPal, use your credit card, like purchase it through the app. Don't like purchase it through here and go through outside means, okay? Because then you're not going to be covered because eBay is full of scams also, okay? We're going to cover more scams toward the end, but now since we're here... We're going to cover one that is extremely common and they kind of change every so often. So just want people to be aware of it. Okay. 
So here, you can see here, so just because it's sponsored doesn't mean it's a scam, obviously, right? But that's one thing when it's sponsored, I kind of look at. So like, for example, with this listing here for a KS3M, okay? This is a very, very common practice, okay? So what they do is these guys hack into these eBay accounts that people don't really take care of. Like, for example, this one is the seller is Key Code America, which has 24,000 sales and an 8.7%. So you look at that like, oh, okay, that sounds good. Maybe they're just selling something a little bit different, which does happen also, right? People do have businesses and they do do things and they sell on the side, but we'll look at why this one should start sending these red flags, okay? So, but typically people see this like, okay, you know, boom, good price, in stock now, overnight shipping. I like that. This guy has crazy reviews, crazy good things. Let's click on it. So as we go through the listing, and this is again a scam that's been going on forever, I try to report these as much as possible, but they are always slightly changing, okay? So like in this case, for example, what they do is they have a price that's kind of, in this case, it is actually a realistic price. Typically what they'll do is they'll list the unbelievable price. Like for example, this one is also them. This is a KS5 Pro at $9,000, which is obviously extremely cheap. Should, should give you red flags here, but in the pics they show that accepting crypto payments only contact us send us directly btc and eth okay huge red flags it is 100 percent a scam so again what these guys are doing is they are hacking into these accounts right it's an account that does not sell any kind of asics they put in pictures from whatever stock they're able to get maybe it could be their own whoever but they try to get you to send crypto and then they scam you. Okay, so this is one that's common here. But again, if you purchase through the app directly, meaning you purchase it, like if you were to do a buy it now and pay the 2,500 bucks and it does end up being a scam, you're gonna get that money back, right? But if you send crypto to this email, you ain't gonna get shit back, okay? So just fully understand that, fully understand the risks, whether you're doing it here, you're gonna see it other places. And again, we'll cover more of the scams here towards the end, but just make sure you do fully, fully understand that, okay? Um, so again, as far as pricing goes, let's get to some price comparisons, okay? So this is where things do get a little bit tricky, okay? So we're going to cover some of the more popular stores. We're going to do specific models that are popular just to give you an idea of price points and why I purchased through who I purchase and what's considered good prices at bad prices. As for those of you who watch me frequently, pricing is a big deal, right? We do these monthly AC pricing updates and we tend to focus on deals. We'll go through these comparisons and just also understand as we go through these things that pricing isn't everything, okay? We'll talk a little bit more about it towards the end, but this is just to give you an idea, okay? So we're going to do three stores, right? Two are the most common ones, which we hear about, which are Crypto Miner Bros, Coin Mining Central, and I'm going to compare them with NHash so you can see why I like purchasing through NHash, okay? So again, this is not a dig at these stores, and this is not saying to not use these stores because there is a reason for the price and there is a benefit to it. And well, again, we'll, we'll talk about that more towards the end, okay? So we'll start off with the KS0 Ultra first, Okay. Miner Bros price 449 and again this is shipped. Okay, so 449 shipped. Just keep in mind again in this specific instance the best price is actually through Ice River ends up being under 300 shipped, right? But let's go to CMC. This is 44852. And then from Nhash Direct it is 249 but then 100 bucks shipping. Okay, so 349. Okay, so Pretty significant difference. Just understand here that there's typically coupons associated though, right? So whoever you're, you follow other influencers, you can see Voscoin's official partner. I know quite a few others are. They typically will have coupons, but even after the coupon price, typically NHash still beats them out pretty significantly, okay? Let's go on to the next one. Now let's go through a more popular model. Currently, this is the KS5L, which currently, Miner Bros, their current in stock price. So this is the spot price. This is not the July pre-order batch. This is spot. They have it at 6,600 bucks, which is pretty hefty. CMC has it at 5,500 bucks currently. This is, again, these are spot prices. Versus NHash, their spot price is 4,549, 200 shipping, so under 4,800 bucks. 
Okay, so 4,800 to 6,500, pretty drastic difference. Okay, CMC is definitely better on this front, but still a little outrageous in my opinion. Okay, so this is one where if you are dead set on ordering to one of these guys, I would see if maybe they want to update that price. I'm not a big fan of having to do all that. Like to me, you should, if you're going to be a low price leader, be the low price leader, right? I'm not a fan of having to do coupons. And even with NHash, I'm not a fan. I really wish they would just list the total price here also, right? So they're not perfect either. I wish they would just be, because typically for full size ASICs, it's the same price on all of them. So just put in that price so it's just easier to read, right? That way you can kind of do what they're doing. But this is why it's important to shop around, look at different sellers, and then hash isn't always going to be the cheapest either. Just typically out of the major stores, that's who I have purchased through successfully. And that's who I will purchase from in the future. Okay. Unless something changes, I do like to try other stores, right? But I'm not like a person with a ton of ASICs, so it's not something I do very frequently. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, just something to consider there let's go on to the next one so this is the ka box pro which is another popular one which has been sinking in price lately but um minor bros has it at 13.99 cmc at 14.09 so fairly close but again typically they will have coupons from again from whoever you're using and hashes price is 9.49 plus like 100 shipping so like 10.50 okay so another pretty significant difference there Let's go to the Jazz Miner X16Q, 3349 for Miner Bros, CMC at 3460. So in this case, Miner Bros is cheaper. But N hash has it at 2579. Let's say it's 200 for shipping. I believe it's 100 and change, but we'll even factor it at that point. Still under 20 100 bucks. And then what's even better is they have a pre-order for July at 2400 which is pretty enticing, which is, again isn't an option here. Maybe they'll have one in the future, but something to take note let's continue down the list let's go to the x16 qe which is the budget model 2349 from minor bros 2691 from cmc and then 17 oh man this one just got updated 1749 from nhash and this is stock oh man that price is pretty good actually um wow but you can again you can see the difference in price here right and even just from these two guys that's why it's important to shop around look at different things and again you don't have to use n hash it's just one i've used and i'm just using them for price comparison as to me it's like different tiers right it's like minor bros and cmc and then a lot of these other budget ones there are newer ones coming up which i've been hearing of and there was some that again i saw at the conferences that i do want to try but again i can personally vouch for n hash just because i've used them successfully with no issue okay now here's another tricky one this is the al box 4700 bucks from minor bros 4741 so practically the same so here you kind of choose whichever one has the best coupon again hit up uh the influencers who kind of work for them and hash has it at 37.99 okay so under 4k shipped so another one that keeps on tanking so these are just price comparisons, and this doesn't mean this is not a dig at CMC or Minor Bro. So there are benefits, believe it or not, to buying from these guys, right? And the big thing is a lot of the times, the trust factor, okay? These guys are affiliated with a lot of the big content creators, so we know like RPM, et cetera, et cetera. So there is a lot more trust here with these guys, okay? They're not going to ruin because these are kind of like the leaders in the space for the ASIC minor stores, okay? They're not gonna ruin their reputation over me because I just started to buy one ASIC and I got screwed over. They're not gonna screw me over and it potentially ruin their reputation over that, okay? So just the trust factor is the biggest things when you are purchasing through arguably the leaders in the space, okay? They are the ones that we hear the most about, haven't heard anything really negative, just price points obviously are higher, but as far as the customer service factor goes, have not actually heard anything negative from Minor Bros or CMC, okay? Also, because they do have deep ties with a lot of these content creators, there is another recourse there as well. I have seen it many times where somebody was trying to get an update from their order from like Minor Bros and they reached out to one of them. 
they on their own couldn't get an answer, but when they reached out to that person, that person got an ins- instant answer for them because, again, they have that deep personal tie. A lot of times they are partnered with them. So, again, that reputation is everything. Okay, so for me, yes, the price is higher, but for me, the confidence level with these guys is going to be higher because, again, at the end of the day, guys, any of these guys can freaking ghost us. They can shut down. They can go out of the business. Who freaking knows? But all these things are to try to just kind of like reduce the likelihood of that happening. Okay, so like, yes, these are more expensive and you have to weigh the risks, right? In some cases, the prices are pretty close, right? Just did kind of the more common ones. But that's why I always recommend shop around. So just because you had a good experience with one, look at these guys. If the price is pretty close, if it's only like a couple hundred bucks difference, even from like NHash to Minor Bros, I would probably just purchase it through Minor Bros. Because again, their reputation is more pronounced. It is more known. They're, again, they're not going to screw you over over one sale when they are arguably, again, the leaders in the space. Now, if it's a drastic difference, like we saw with some of these things, I'll go with NHash all day. But if this guy is $13.99 here and it's, you know, $13.49 on NHash, I will probably just purchase through Minor Bros, right? That's typically not the case, though, but that's something I would consider, right? So always price shop, okay? Don't get stuck into one store. Always look around. But there's two sides to that coin also because another thing that I would want to harp on is you want to develop a relationship with that store, right? And I'm not talking about being a sponsor or affiliate, anything like that, but just how do you feel about that vendor? Like when you purchased through them, did they respond instantly? Were they friendly? Did you have a dedicated salesperson? Because a lot of them do, right? They have different salespeople. A lot of times you will be able to talk to them and they'll answer your questions instantly. Like that's one thing that did catch me with like BT Miners initially is that anytime I emailed them within 24 hours, I got a response, which some of the others I was trying out because that's another good way to kind of get feelers for them and see how they respond to any questions, any communications, and you can base things off of that. Um, typically, a lot of these guys, though, they do deal with like Telegram more than anything. So I understand that's where typically most of the communication will come from. Okay. So again, I am saying the price match, but at the end of the day, also, if you had a good experience with one store or they took care of you in a certain time, then sometimes that's more important. Right. Like, for example, the experience what I mentioned with Coastal, with how they took care of the people, that to me is big. Right. Things like that, little things like that, they don't seem like very big. But for me, that's that's huge. Okay, that is definitely a big factor. That is something that I love. And that's something that you do have to take into account. So, yes, a lot of the times our channel does focus on getting the best prices, getting bangs for the buck. But also understand that pricing isn't everything. Okay, because right now we're in a different climate. We're in a climate right now where these guys are very eager for sales and there's a lot of vendors, a lot of new guys in the space, and it's very easy to get these things. Come the bull market though, when things do get hyped or with these ASICs that are extremely hyped that become hard to get, those relationships are gonna be everything because they're gonna be more truthful to you. You're likely to get the truth as to what's going on because you're gonna see a lot of the bullshit that's gonna happen in about 12, less than 12 months, probably like six to eight months from now, when things really start to pick up and these things start getting harder to come by. Okay, you're going to see all these stories that happened last bull market where people were purchasing, let's say now, like pre-orders, like a good example is like the L9, for example, people were pre-ordering, they have freaking pre-orders all the way to like freaking January, right? And they're like 6,500 bucks. So let's say you pre-ordered it. Okay, I'm got it from this guy, 6,500 bucks. Awesome. January comes around and the L9 is now selling for 18 to 20K. Guess what's going to happen? They're going to sell it to the normie who's going to pay 18 to 20K over fulfilling your order. You're just, you're just going to get pushed back, right? You're going to get hit with, oh, it got delayed. Oh, we didn't get our allocation. Oh, we had issues with your miner. We had issues with your shipment, things of that sort, right? So this is why you do want to have a good relationship. As, again, it's not the biggest thing in the world right now, but in the future, it will be. Okay, so if you do have a good relationship with that store, with that vendor, with that reseller, with that person, that's when it's going to pan out. Because they'll be like, hey, you know, I got you. I have an allocation of five. Do you want one? Okay, I've had some of them reach out in like those capacities as well, right? And it's from reaching out, from developing that relationship 
with that store with that reseller okay so that's when it can definitely pay out because Again, it's going to be important in the future, right? So you definitely want to avoid those kind of things. And that's why I mentioned that, yes, we do focus on pricing. But at the end of the day, in reality, pricing isn't always going to be everything. Okay, sometimes, again, for a hundred bucks or something, it's worth it to go with whatever's just going to be more reputable, whichever one's going to be more trustworthy. Okay, so that's a huge, huge thing, which I get it right now. It's not really that big of a thing because just it's... The market is so crappy, so sales are super easy to come by, but it's something that is going to be a big deal in the future, okay? So another big thing we wanted to talk about, which we touched on a little bit, are scams, 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 and these scams are only going to get crazier with this freaking AI push. This is going to be nuts, bros. If you think it's bad now or was bad in the past, it's only going to get worse, so we got to stay on top of those things. Um, so a couple instances, one we had talked about, this was kind of a, a thing with like the telegrams, WhatsApp senders. So it does happen. And this is why I'm kind of not a big fan of doing the whole transaction through that, right? Rather do it through the store is because sometimes these guys get hacked. Okay. And it has happened many times over and over. And even some of the bigger stores, a lot of times, again, they like to preferably talk through whatsapp through telegram and that's fine but i wouldn't do the transaction through that through that entity right i would make sure go through the website look at the address you're sending to doing it like that right so like in this example they posted a whole article article about it so shout out to them for being open about it and they're talking about how they got hacked one of their accounts got hacked and some people did get screwed in this process okay so this has happened before it's going to continue to happen it's only going to get worse and that's a big reason why i'm not a fan of telegram or even discord it's just so easy for these accounts to get hacked it's just i'm it's like scam galore it's like the hot spot for these freaking scams so i'm like not a fan of doing that um this one was from a while ago at the beginning of this year uh, oddly enough it did just happen to be them but they also did have another one so they deleted the tweet though i was kind of looking through it i did take a screenshot of it the day it happened but they had another one here and this was actually from one of their salespeople, right so recently our company received reports from several customers our employee cyril Da, 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 took advantage of customers so this is one where it's a little bit different because it wasn't a hack it was just like a rogue employee right who kind of screwed people over so just keep that in mind again it's unfortunate that it just ended up being jingle mining again but i was looking for the tweet it looks like they deleted the tweet it's from like june 25th right so again another reason why i don't like dealing directly through those things okay so some of the other more common ones are, and this is a benefit through using affiliate links through whoever you're purchasing through, right? Again, you can purchase whoever the hell you want through, but a benefit there is that you are truly going to get the actual website, okay? So always try to confirm that you are purchasing from the correct store because there are gonna be a ton, a ton of fake sites, okay? This one, for example, is a common one, is one that gets spread around every couple of months. And even some of the bigger content creators, even recently, there was one who posted a, up a link on Twitter. And I even tried to, like, reply to them to try to take it down. And they didn't for whatever reason. So that was kind of annoying because, again, I'm a big advocate for whenever I see that stuff. And whenever you guys see that stuff, call them out. Have them fix that. Have them delete it because we don't want to spread these things, okay? So again, this is a common one that pops up every couple of months and it's with fake super scalers, right? That FPGA, this was a big one with the fake K30ZX, which had all these crazy listings and it's confirmed fake, right? The actual website is superscaler.io, but you're gonna have a lot of fake websites. And again, a lot of the these websites and a lot of even the real websites look so bootleg also that it's hard to tell which one's the real one, which one's the fake one, right? Like in this instance, the fake website is arguably better than the real website. Okay, so <laughs> factor that in also, but again, make sure you research, make sure you're looking at those things, hit people up. Hey, is this, does this look right to you? Does this look fake? Because again, people get caught up and like, oh man, I found this new release. I don't want to tell anybody because I want to make sure I get the first shipment. And unfortunately, that's the mentality and those are the mentality and those are the people who get screwed, right? So like this happened, unfortunately, to a ton of people. 
It continues to happen to people. People thought this K20 and K30Y are real, and they got scammed. It's just not a good look, right? So please, guys, when you see that, call them out. Have people delete it. And we'll get that fixed. Uh, another one, and this is one with Ice River, and this is an easy one to do. This is one that I've, this happened frequently. This was, again, there was initially, even when this first came out, it was icerever.com, I remember it was a fake one. The actual website for reference is icerever.io. In this case, it's icerivers.io. So that one little letter, they made the website look very similar. It looks kind of blurry, it looks a little shittier, but good enough to like fake it so there are going to be a lot of these guys and this is only going to get worse there are going to be a lot of other manufacturers again kind of hyping on like this kind of thing where oh it's a cool new asic like there was a ton of them when the caspa asics first came out there was like fake you know silicon website saying oh this is the new caspa release and again people are purchasing it with the intention of, like oh i want to make sure i get in this first batch i'm not going to tell anybody and i'm going to just order it and those people got freaking wrecked right so there was Fake ones of that one, Black Miner, Gecko Science, like all these that didn't make any sense because they don't delve into those. People didn't see those red flags. They got into the greed factor. And again, this is going to happen, right? We're going to see this when the Alephium Asics come out, the Radiant Asics come out. We're going to see a repeat of all this junk, guys. So please stay aware. Please keep these things in mind. Again, we had talked about that eBay one in the beginning. And it's only going to get worse, right? There's going to be fake links galore. People are, people's Twitter accounts are going to get hacked. People's, you know, Telegram accounts are going to get hacked. They're going to put fake websites out. Keep those things in mind. Again, the most secure place is through these websites, okay? The, the odds of the entire website and the whole system getting hacked are a lot slimmer. Again, anything's possible, and it's possible these guys to ghost you and do whatever as well. We just want to do what we can to minimize the risk of that, especially when... These damn ASIC prices are getting out of control, whether the norm is starting to become like 10 to 15 plus thousand dollars for a freaking ASIC, which is a whole nother topic. But got to keep these things in mind, guys. I know it's a lot, but these are things to consider. Again, we wanted to kind of cover the whole thing, just different factors. So again, in the comments, guys, if you guys, whoever, if you guys had a successful purchase, you guys had a bad experience, whoever it was, please let us know in the comments. Put your experiences. Let us know how things are going. I know there's a lot of excitement. There's a lot of newer people coming and people are always asking, oh, what I purchased from. And I don't necessarily like talking about all the things, but I did want to just do it at least in one solid video, kind of talking about the pros and cons. And again, it's not to shit on anybody. It's not to shit on any of these stores or anybody affiliated with these stores. Because again, like I mentioned, there are benefits to buying from those more trustworthy stores. Okay, you just have to see if the price difference is worth it to you. Because at the end of the day, that's kind of the enticing part, right? It's Finding that balance of risk to reward, where the price is at, et cetera, et cetera, right? So let me know in the comments, guys. Let me know if you guys are buying anything, what you guys are buying. I just saw that damn Jazz Miner price in that one. <laughs> I was waiting for a little reduction. Don't want kind of caught me off guard, so maybe look at that one a little bit closer. But let me know what you guys are buying. Let me know what you guys are interested in, who you guys are buying, guys. Please comment, like, and subscribe, guys. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it, guys. And I am out.